Ask anyone in Harlem and they will tell you there is no place like Grandma's Place. The 81-year-old owner of this toy and bookstore has earned her title as Grandma of the Neighborhood. And you spend one second with Grandma Dawn and you'll know why. So, Grandma Dawn, yes. can you tell me what was the first thing you ever won in your life, in your entire life? First thing. The first and only thing I ever won was a brownstone in Harlem. What point did you buy the area next door? I was living next to this empty, vacant building for maybe 10 years or so. So I approached the, um, the rental agents and I asked them about the store. And um, I got the store and I thought what was needed was a literacy center because people needed to know how to read and parents needed to know how to work with their kids. And so I started selling educational toys and then the concept of toys and books took off. And now here we are. Here we are. At Grandma's Place. Yes. Can you tell me, where did your love of reading come from? My mother worked three jobs and my sister, who was five years older than I was, was given the job of taking care of me. And so my sister would drop me off at the library <laughs> and run the streets, as my mother would say. So I, I fell in love with books in the library. So why the toys? Or can you tell me what was I never, the... I never had a toy. Until you were how old? 21 years old. So What was I, that toy? What was the first one? A G.I. Joe. I was working at the time, and I started collecting G.I. Joe, and I bought everything that G.I. Joe had, and I loved it. Then I met a little boy that didn't have a G.I. Joe, and I gave him my whole collection about three years later, but I, I do that a lot. I was gonna say, yes. how much do you give away? I give away a lot of things because I, to me, to whom a lot is given, much is expected. And a kid that comes in here that wants something and if he has some money and if he wants to want some particular thing and he wants to work for it, I give him the opportunity to work for it and he, he gets what he wants. There are parents now who were children before who are now bringing their children to the store. If I were to poll the neighborhood and ask the kids and ask the parents what role Grandma's Place and Grandma Dawn plays in the neighborhood, what would they say? Well, I am the community's grandma. I am the one that the kids bring the report card to that say, Grandma, you told me that if I got better grades that you would, and I say, yep, I sure did. So this is a regular stop on the way to the park or from the park. Some parents have to walk on the other side of the street, <laughs> you know. And when, when the pandemic was going on and our store was closed, the kids would stop in front of the store being closed and stand out there and cry. And I would come outside and open the store and let them go in and get anything they want and, and leave. We'd love to support you. And yes. I've never actually well, met you, but I want you. you to know that thank you. living in this neighborhood it makes such a difference. This Thank is a you. light at the end of the corner. Thank you. And, and another thing, you know, look, my daughter can come in here and find a doll that looks like her. Listen, what sets this place apart is that you could come in this store and the kids, they could see themselves in the books. Yes. They could see themselves in the dolls. Absolutely. And that's so, it's so important. And when my daughters were growing up, the dolls that they had were um, brown versions of white dolls. They weren't, they had no black features. They were not black dolls. They were white dolls that were painted brown. And they were few and far between. And books, they were uh, Little Black Sambo, Aunt Jemima, uh, whatever. But they weren't books that had any substance to them. And so I started reading, looking and finding books and finding authors. And when I found those books, those were the books that I wanted to bring into the store so that people, kids could see themselves and positive stories and autobiographies of people that were doing things. Some of these kids never knew of them, them own selves. You know, I wanted them to recognize that they were somebody special, you know? And so that's, that was my main purpose. But then I did that for Latino children, Asian children, because we're all special. And everybody that leaves here leaves here better for it, including me. I feel it just sitting, sitting on this bench with you. I feel it too. That's my mission in life. That's why I'm still here for 81 years. <laughs> you know, that's my purpose in life, you know? It's such a, when I leave a place, I want to leave it better than when I came in.